Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Mars Retrograde video. This year in our skies, Mars is going to go retrograde from about the end of October to early January of next year. And Mars will retrograde across Taurus as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, if you're new to Vedic astrology, click on the link below. You will be taken to a chart calculator which will tell you your planetary placements as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. And if you have your Western coordinates, you can just subtract 23 degrees and you will get the same information. I also wanted to just take a moment to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining this growing community. I hope you have a good time while you're here. There are so many different things on this channel. We have these type of sky watch news reports. We've got astro chat reports. We've got coaching. We've got meditations, pick a cards. There's all kinds of things going on here all the time. So please do subscribe if you feel inspired. And guys, when we hit the 10,000 mark, I've got a little special something for everybody on this platform that I think you'll all enjoy. I haven't written it yet, but when we're getting close to that mark, I will prepare a little something special that I think you're all really going to love. So please do make sure you hit that subscribe button and join what is a really lovely place. And people in the comments below are so kind and have little chats with each other and are helping each other out. And I'm just blown away by the quality of people that come here. Thank you all so much for making this a wonderful place to be on the internet. And I hope you know, people out there just feel comfortable that they can come here, be themselves, express yourself in the comments, you know, and it's a very friendly place. So why don't we get into this Mars retrograde? So I've got on my notes here, 31st October to 12 Jan, those are the dates. I'll put it on the screen as well. Now we're gonna have Mars retrograde in Taurus. I'm gonna cover how this may feel for the whole collective. And I'll also take a look at what this is going to mean for us personally. Now with the collective, I'm just going to have a go. I'm just going to see if I can put some ideas out there and you know we can explore some of the things, how this could manifest, but I'm not going to be making any hard and fast predictions or any of that. My interest is definitely more in the personal side of things and how this will manifest for you personally and individually. That's always more my area of expertise and my interest, but I, I do like to have a crack at the collective energies as well. So let's take a look at Mars retrograde in Taurus for the collective. Now, Taurus is about large money, wealth, savings. You know, it's that original second house there. So we've got all that kind of thing. We've also got food, we've got resources, we've got, it's earth, Taurus is earth, right? Now Mars is the soldier on the battlefield and Mars likes to get all dressed up. He likes to go to the battlefield and he likes to do his thing, right? Now in the old days, I would imagine that would involve, you know, getting out his weapons and, and whatever Mars does. These days, Mars is, you know, the, the corporate warrior. He's got his suit on and his cufflinks and he, he's, he's doing it that way these days. Um, he wants market share. Now, how does he feel when he goes into Taurus? It's quite interesting because Mars is always looking for something to do. And, you know, in this place of Taurus, he does want to increase wealth but at the same time, he might use money to make money. It's that kind of thing as well. So expenses can definitely go up. I have a note here that Mars fourth aspect on Leo is indicating expenses relating to running a kingdom may go up. Okay, now we are observing that right now. We're seeing that electricity bills are going up, you know, all of our bills are going up right now, aren't they? Everything's costing more. Even things in the supermarket are costing more. You know, bills going up is going to have knock-on effects in all kinds of ways. So prices are going up uh, right now, but I do think that, that that could be an early sign now of the Mars 
big retrograde in Taurus because this is quite a chunk of the year and we could even we're in September we could be feeling this now of course so it has been reported in the media that a lot of bills are going up and that does make perfect sense I've got the note here mismanagement of food uh, goods supply chains you know they, they could be um, problems that will show up at this time so dependencies in supply chains if there are problems that happen with transport fuel costs going up all these kind of things we could have shortages of things uh, some areas not having enough some areas having too much supply of one thing all this type of thing could be going on we're also going to have a mars ninth aspect as well which is going to show up a lot of frustration with authority uh, that can massively build up at this time so this could even show up with certain leaders as well being frustrated with their orders you know we might start to see oh this person is not quite as powerful as we thought they were and it turns out that they have bosses and all that kind of thing so some of these things will show up as well now for each of us personally how is this going to manifest well personally we have quite a few different ways in which this will manifest the first one that i'm going to talk about is really interesting because i actually did the research on this many months ago when one of my clients hello if you're watching she mentioned that she would be going for some cosmetic surgery and she said that she'd be doing that towards the end of the year and we had quite a little bit of a discussion about you know um, would that be good or not i did point out to her that there is a mars retrograde at this time but from my research i found out that quite a lot of surgeries happen when mars is in retrograde isn't that interesting and they go well is what i found out as well i gave her the dates of the mars retrograde i said look if you're worried about the fact that mars you know a very significant planet for surgery is retrograde even though my research is showing me that it should be fine it should be perfectly fine in fact um, i said that you know you can opt to have your surgery outside of these dates because it's a type of surgery that she can nominate she can do it any time that she wants to kind of thing and i thought she might be nervous about retrograde and i'm so glad we had that discussion because she said to me i she said i've had surgery um, to do with you know beauty enhancement and that type of thing she said I've had that during retrogrades before and they've turned out beautifully and she said I trust it I know that it's perfectly fine for me to go in and have a surgery at that time and because I had said to her that one of the things about Mars retrograding is that you are going back to correct something and it was so interesting because she confirmed with me she said that's exactly how i've seen it when a planet has been retrograde and i've gone for surgery she said i get excellent results so isn't that interesting so because i had that discussion with my client i know i can confidently tell you guys that you know if you are having to have surgery at that time please do not be worried another thing i suggest to people if they do worry about those kinds of things or, or they're just nervous about surgery or any of that I also tell people that you can request a guide or a god or a goddess to um, work through the people who are working on you for example so even when I go to the dentist and if there's a loud drill or something that you know, makes me a bit nervous in my mind I might silently call you know Archangel Michael or Lord Shiva or something like that just to hey could you just be here and, and make sure it's all all right so that's just a little tip anyone who's going in for surgery or anything like that at that time please don't be worried number one because it should be fine but if you do hold some superstition or you're worried about retrograde you don't have to be um, I'm not superstitious about retrograde at all I you know when it's mercury retrograde people say oh don't buy a computer or any of that I buy computers I do all this stuff I, I have no worries about retrograde because I study astrology and I've seen so many charts and I'm observing all the time I'm observing my own chart and how things work for me all the time uh, I've seen people buy cars because people say during mercury retrograde you shouldn't buy a car and things like that uh, I, I don't 
believe in those things and none of these things has ever impacted me. So, yeah. Now, the reason I bring up Mars is surgery, yes, it is. Taurus is represents the face as well, okay? And it is beauty and it is things like people nominating to have surgery just to enhance their looks and things like that. So you'll be fine at this time if you're having to go through any of that. The other note that I have is that people might feel low on energy, okay? You might feel naturally just a little bit tired. Now, why is this? It's because Mars, when he is lauded by Venus, and I've seen this when he is lauded by, so Venus in Taurus or even Venus in Libra, for some reason, Mars gets quite tired. And I'm going to bring up um, on the screen this beautiful Botticelli painting, which I think it's in, is it in the National Gallery in London? If I've messed that up, I'll correct it on the screen. But I once heard Sister Wendy discuss this painting and I loved her interpretation of it. I was supposed to watch re-watch her talking about it, but I'll just go purely off memory. I'm pretty sure she explains how, you know, Venus is, the, well, firstly, this is a painting of Mars and Venus together, and they've just had their night of passion. And Venus is wide awake and she's, as Sister Wendy Beckett says, cool as a cucumber, not a hair out of place. And she's got all this energy, but Mars has been conquered. And this is quite true. We could see at this time, some people might just feel a bit flat or a bit, you know, not as energized because Venus is in charge and Mars is in retrograde. Mars has been conquered possibly, you know, by Venus here. And um, yeah, some people might be feeling drained or tired. This could be fantastic energy if, let's say, for example, maybe you've just met someone you're very much in love. Yes, you could be having these kind of Botticelli moments quite frequently. So that could be a really good thing. I've got the note here, yeah, potential great time of passion if you're happily coupled up. Now, Mars' fourth aspect on Leo is going to be great for all the creative professionals out there. If you're an artist, if you love making things, you're always making things, you can't help but make things, well, you're going to have energy to do that. Okay, so even though some people might be physically feeling tired, and at times you might be physically tired, uh, because Mars, of course, you know, very much rules the physical body, the original first house. Um, so at times you might be feeling physically tired, but, you know, this fourth aspect on Leo, uh, the Sun and Mars go great together and they, they really thrive with each other's energy. So you could have, if you have energy, you could be feeling very creative. It could be quite good in that sense. I've got the note here, frustration with where you live is possible. That is true, and this has been coming up in some of my client readings, actually, that some of you are expressing to me that where you live just isn't doing it for you anymore. You're just starting to look around you and get frustrated, and you're like, what am I doing here? That is very possible at this time. Mars is the character of property. We've got Taurus being Earth. You know, Taurus is our stuff. I was trying to think of a couple of personal examples of how this has manifested in my life. And I do know that sometimes when I'm in England, I'm very fortunate. I'm here in Sydney, Australia temporarily. I'll be going back to England soon. But when I'm in England, I every now and then I'll, I'll just walk down my street and something will happen where I see something and I think that's it. I've got to go. I've got, I need to get out of here. And I was thinking of the last time this happened, I think it was 2018 or 2019, somewhere there. And I'm walking down the street and there's a Weatherspoons, which is like a, a pub type thing. And they had an outdoor area. Anyway, there was this guy who looked like, I mean, he might've been 12 years old. I'm not sure because I could tell from his mustache that he hadn't shaved. It was one of those fluffy mustaches. Anyway. And it, but it was giant, he was huge. He was this huge 12 year old, odd looking, fascinating person. But he was holding a pint. 
and it was 11 in the morning and I'm just I'm looking at this scene and I'm like I have to get out of here you know it was that kind of scene where I'm like no that's I, I don't know what this is I have to get out of I can't compute brain can't compute right now but then I come here and I go to my cafe here and I have can't compute moments here these days where I'm sat there and this is very Mars in Taurus because Mars will do this Mars will look around at all the physical stuff around him every now and then and just He'll just feel claustrophobic and pokey and what am I doing here? Like, what, what is this? So I'm at this cafe down the road and, you know, I'm sitting on a wooden chair that's falling apart. It's full of grandma's old knickknacks. And there's like a 21-year-old parked in a Lamborghini out the front. There's about 100 grand's worth of Coco Chanel bags, you know, on the people that are around me. It's so weird, and, and this, this, this cafe is falling apart. And I'm thinking, am I in a mafia front? What is this? Like, you know, the town that I'm in now has changed so much from when I was young. And it's funny because Mars in Venus, in, Ta in Taurus, can be like this. Mars can be looking at the things around him going, how does any of this work? How, how's there a 21-year-old driving a Lamborghini? And you know, what, what, is, what is all this? What, where am I? You know, that kind of feeling can occur. So yeah, I think um, there's just, could th there could be this frustration with where you live or this thing of you're analyzing the stuff that's around you and you're trying to compute and you're trying to calculate and you just can't and nothing makes sense. You know, it's, it's this kind of thing that is quite possible. I've got the note here that this will be released uh, when the new Saturnian energy emerges early next year. Th this will be released, this will change. But you might just have this frustration or cabin fever or what am I doing here or how is there a 12-year-old drinking beer at 11 and <laughs> how is there a 21-year-old driving a, a Lamborghini? Anyway, um, the other thing that you could experience personally at this time is that there could be now the frustration energy that I speak of here, this is Mars frustrated. Why? Because Mars is dressed up, he wants to go to the battlefield and yet he's lauded by Venus. You know, it's this feminine area and it's about brand labels and handbags and cars and you know, it's this, right? So there's frustration energy here and how that can manifest personally is that there could be the potential for more arguments or more heated words you know, what you say could trigger something or something could be said to you that triggers something within you. Life could feel like a little bit of a pressure cooker at this time, okay? Now, a lot of people in my audience, you are the light workers, you are the healers, you are the creatives, the artists, all these kind of people. And that's true even if that's not your daily profession. You know, I have so many people who are accountants and consultants and you know in those kind of work jobs and that's fine but a lot of you are in those roles and you're bringing peace and healing and light you know in those environments so it's good for you to be aware that this Mars energy is going to be quite strong at this time because it's your light it's your healing presence it's your calm that's gonna make it okay for everyone. Also, you're in the know, you've got this knowledge. So because you're aware, these things aren't going to build or stick onto you because you're aware, you're emitting all this light. So I have the note here that yeah, through awareness, uh, any of the, the negative aspects of this Mars retrograde, they can, the negative things can just really dissolve because you're knowledgeable, you're in the know, you're aware, you're watching a video like this, okay? Um, Mars ninth aspect is definitely indicating arguments with authority figures. So this could be bosses at work, but also it could be your father as well, okay? So just be aware of that. If that's a relationship that is difficult for you, then just take care or take time out or, you know, but being in the know and being aware is the ultimate because nothing 
nothing can touch you when, when you're aware, when you're in the know. Okay, so I think we are good to get into the mini readings. Now, this time for the mini readings, I'm just going to be reading Mars for each sign. And how you can do this is you can look up from your ascendant and your moon, definitely. You can also look from your sun, especially if your sun is quite significant in your chart, you're a creative person, or you have a lot of planets conjunct your sun. You're very welcome to watch all three. Why don't we begin with Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So for you, Mars is a benefic. We should see some good results here. I'm not anticipating anything too challenging or too difficult. No, it's all looking quite good for you, Aries. Now Mars is going to be in Taurus in your second house. So be careful of overspending. Also be careful of how you speak with family members, and that's definitely family members in particular. And just know that if there are some family members that are frustrated, or there's some heated words that come your way, you're now prepared. You're in the know, so you know not to take it personally. Now Mars's fourth aspect will be on Leo in the fifth house. This can energize the sun. Now I had a look at where is the sun. The sun will be transiting houses eight and nine. So when I read all of this together, I'm seeing that this is going to make you determined at work, but be careful with how you speak to seniors or bosses or people above you. Okay, just be humble. I guess that's the advice there. You know, Mars can be very brash. Mars is like, I want to get up and go. I want to get it done. And you might just want to take care how you speak to seniors at this time. Okay. Now Mars's seventh aspect will be on Scorpio in the eighth house. So this could have you rearranging your finances or looking at shared assets in a new way or dealing with that. Perhaps there might be something along those lines. We're just going to have a look here. This could be something to do with family as well. You might be feeling a little bit restless. You might be able to take a short trip possibly with family as well. Now we're going to have Mars's eighth aspect on Sagittarius in your ninth house. So again, this is that energy that I was reading with the Mars fourth aspect on Leo. I'm seeing that this could really embolden you at work. It could make you quite ambitious. But definitely be careful how you speak with seniors. This energy could be really good for you to skill up in something new. So if there's something new that you want to learn, you're going to have some energy to do that. You're going to have some energy possibly to add another string to your bow. So wouldn't that be a great idea? Aries, overall, I'm seeing that this should be a fairly good time for you. I'm not seeing anything difficult or challenging or, or any of that. So see how it goes for you. Also, bear in mind that every 15 years, Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars. So you might want to check your chart and just see if that's the case for you, okay? Um, because that will be significant. And very often when there's a retrograde on natal Mars, it has you fighting for things you believe in. You have to stand up for yourself. Okay. And for you, that could be um, in the area of family members, if it's happening there for you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Aries. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So for you, Taurus, Mars is a benefic, okay? Uh, even though the software I use states neutral, but um, BV Raman is very much of the opinion that Mars is a benefic and I tend to go with what he says. So let's have a look. Now Mars is in Taurus in your first house. This could be a time where you have to stand up for something you believe in. Yeah, a little bit like Aries, I was saying that for them as well, uh, in the case of Mars retrograding on natal Mars, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, 
you might have to stand up for something you believe in. Isn't that interesting? And this could be to do with family. This could be to do with the fact that your family members, they all have a certain opinion, but you have to stand up and, and kind of do your own thing here. Now, Mars' fourth aspect on Leo in your fourth house, this could be quite interesting. You've got the sun transiting houses seven and eight at this time. So energy and attention might be needed at home and you're going to be the peacekeeper or you're going to be the negotiator between parties. Okay. Now it's Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in the seventh house. Be careful of arguments with partner. Be careful of how you speak to your partner. Be careful. Perhaps some heated words could be reflected back to you, but know that don't take any of this personally because you know, it, it's just a tricky transit and this phase will end. Okay. Now there's a Mars eighth aspect on Sagittarius in your eighth house. This could encourage you to rearrange your finances or take a look at your shared assets. Perhaps there's something you have to rearrange or put in place or deal with some paperwork to do with money, something like that. Now, the other thing that I'm telling all signs, is that Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars every 15 years. Now that would be quite significant for you if that is happening. If it is happening, this, this could really be a time where, and you in particular, you have to stand up for yourself in some way and you're going to have to fight for something that you believe in. So if that's you, then I wish you well with that. But I want to thank you so much, Taurus. And we are now going to welcome check the time we're okay Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining now Mars is a malefic for you okay oh before I begin before I begin my notes this is Gemini ascendant moon or Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology all right Mars is a malefic for you okay so with all the guidance that I'm going to give here take your time think carefully you know don't be in a rush don't be impulsive Okay, that Mars energy just wants to go for it, but hold back, see, see what happens. All right, so let's take a look. You're going to have Mars in Taurus in your 12th house. That's where the retrograde will happen. You might feel particularly restless at this time. You might feel physically restless. You could even be tired and drained at times. I've got the note here. It's good to take up a fitness routine or do some more yoga, light yoga, stretching, martial arts. Great when Mars is in this place, okay? Pretty sure Bruce Lee had Mars in the 12th house. So yeah, good time to work on the physical body. Mars fourth aspect on Leo in the third house. Now the sun, Lord of Leo, is going to be transiting houses six and seven. So I factored all this in here. So I've got the note giving you a lot of confidence at work be humble but do speak up okay present your ideas this is a really good time for you to to share what you've got uh, in terms of work ideas if you've got ideas if you want to present something to the boss let's have a look at this oh absolutely mars fourth aspect on leo in the third house you you could be quite creative as well and innovative and you it will be good for you to to present to present your ideas and with Mars, it's like, just don't go overboard. That's all. That's why the be humble is there. That's why. All right. Now, Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in your sixth house. This can be great energy for work. Okay. Again, this is good energy and drive to progress at work, uh, especially if you serve other people or you have clients, you could be, you know, expanding your number of clients. You could be servicing lots and lots of clients. They're could be uh, heated words with competition. So if there are peers at work or people who are quite territorial or this kind of thing, they see you succeeding, you know, you there could be some angry words exchanged or something like that. That is quite possible there. There's also Mars eighth aspect on Sagittarius in the seventh house. So be careful of arguments with your spouse, okay, or business partner or someone who's really close to you. You know, perhaps it could even be a best friend or something like that. But definitely be careful of arguments 
uh, with people who are dear to you. And Gemini, just something for you to bear in mind, Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. So wherever your natal Mars is, you will want to check that out and see there'll be something in that area of life where you have to fight for your beliefs or you have to stand up for yourself. Very often that's how that manifests. So do bear that in mind. All right, Gemini, well, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Sun or Cancer Moon as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now for you, Cancer, Mars is a benefic. So let's take a look. This is actually very good. Oh wow, you've got Mars and Taurus in the 11th. You've got a great thing going on here, Cancer. I'm very happy. So not only is Mars a benefic, but you've got this planet retrograde in Taurus in your 11th house. This is great. This is great for networking. This is great for money. This is great for opportunities. Okay, you're getting a chance. Mars is retrograding. He's sweeping back to collect even more goodness in that 11th house of yours. I'm so happy for you. Now Mars' fourth aspect is going to be on Leo in your second house. This is energizing the sun and the sun will be transiting your fifth and sixth house at this time. So you're going to have energy to create wealth. You're going to have energy to be creative. You know, you've, you've really got the stars here to succeed at work. I'm so happy for you. Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in your fifth house. This is great energy for your creativity. I do have the note here, be careful with investments in the stock market at this time. Um, be conservative is what I would say there. Don't be too aggressive on the stock market or, or that kind of thing. I'm not an expert on that topic, so please don't quote me, but that's one of the things I'm seeing here. And there's Mars eighth aspect on Sagittarius in your sixth house. So this is great energy to succeed at work with clients. You can win more clients. You can beat the competition. You can win legal cases. You know, you should even feel quite energized. You know, other people might come down with bugs, but you won't, you know, you're, you're ready to go. So this is really great energy cancer. I'm so happy for you. Now bear in mind, Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years in a person's chart. So depending on where your natal Mars sits, that is something you might want to look up and you might then want to look up uh, that sign in this report. All right, well, thank you so much, Cancer. We are now gonna welcome Leo. Leo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon, Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, now Mars is a benefic for you. So this is good, we like benefics. Now Mars is gonna be in Taurus in your 10th house. This is really powerful for building your career. My goodness, Leo, you have had such a career focused time, haven't you? I've been talking about career for like the last couple of years. I think this will change for you starting next year. So don't worry, we'll have other things to talk about. Um, but this is a powerful time to keep building your career. Okay, you can achieve a lot. I have the note here, just be humble as you go. Okay, because Mars can be a lot of drive, a lot of ambition, a lot of passion to so just maybe just temper it just a little bit. Now Mars fourth aspect on Leo in the first house. This is going to be energizing the sun which is transiting houses four and five at that time. So factoring all this in I believe that you're going to have energy here to commit to your home life and to your children or your creativity. Okay that can be quite a focus for you at that time. You're going to have the energy basically to maybe there are some house projects or there are some demands on you. Maybe your children need you more or you, you know your creative projects. You're going to have some time to indulge in those. Now Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in your fourth house means you might need to work something out in your relationship with your mother. Uh, it's also a time to be careful of arguments as well. Listen carefully to your family members is what I've got here. That's going to be important. 
Mars eighth aspect on Sagittarius in your fifth house. If you're a boss, you're in charge of employees, um, be careful how you speak with your team members. Also, be careful of expenses going up. You might want to be conservative with your investments at this time. Uh, this, is, this is also children, okay? So if you're a parent, go easy on the kids. All right, just be careful, extra careful how you speak to your children. But all up, Leo, it is looking quite good. Now, the other thing I just want to mention quickly is that Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. So you can look up your Mars placement and then take a look at the sign where your Mars is if you want to see which area that is. Now, a Mars retrograde might have you fighting for your beliefs or standing up for yourself in some way. So when you find out where your Mars is, you can look that up in the mini reports and see how that works for you. All right, well, thank you so much for joining Leo. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Welcome Virgo. So now this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Virgo Mars is a malefic for you. So aspects of this time that's coming up, October to January, some parts of that, you know, may have its challenges, but let's take a look. So Mars will be in Taurus in your ninth house. So you might feel at times that your way is the best way, but what I would say is be careful with run-ins with authority figures, bosses, you know, even siblings uh, at this time, even father, father figures, these kind of people. So do take care at this time, all right? Um, Mars fourth aspect on Leo in your 12th house. This will be energizing the sun, Lord of Leo, right? Uh, now the sun will be transiting houses three and four. So factoring all this in, I'm seeing that you could lose a lot of energy due to procrastination. You might need to rest actually. So why do we procrastinate? It's a really interesting thing. And I have found out through lots of research while I've been procrastinating, watching videos about procrastination, I've discovered this really wonderful thing that procrastination is actually kind of needed sometimes because sometimes you need to rest the mind and inspiration and insights come to a rested mind. So perhaps a bit of procrastination wouldn't go astray at this time. If you're feeling like it, experiment with it, see how you go. Now, Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in your third house. This is quite interesting. There's really good energy here to invest in your social media platforms or profiles. If you run a social media platform, you have a YouTube channel or Instagram or any of these things, this is a really good time to build that up. Present your ideas, share your insights with the world. They will be really well received at this time. Now Mars eighth aspect on Sagittarius in the fourth house, at times you might experience cabin fever, you might feel restless, you might feel that strange sensation I was talking about in the intro. I think I'll leave that in the intro. <clears throat> I was wondering, do I need to cut that out? No, I'll leave it in because it's true. Sometimes you're in a place and you're looking around and you just think, what am I doing here? You might have that feeling. Um, I have the note here, if you can have a small trip safely, then do so. Now the other thing I've been telling all signs is that Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. And what you're going to want to do is look up where your Mars is placed. And this is going to impact people whose natal Mars is in Taurus. And if that's you, you can click on Taurus and you can watch Taurus. But otherwise Virgo, it's looking pretty good. Even though Mars is a malefic, you've got some nice things here as well. It's, it's, it's a mixed bag for you, but there is good energy here for you as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, thank you so much for joining. So now this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, let's take a look. 
Libra. Now it's it's really interesting. My software says that Mars is a malefic, but BV Raman in his book states that Mars is a feeble benefic for you guys. And I tend to go with what BV Raman has to say. I did map out all the lords and I had a look myself and I agree with BV Raman. So Mars is going to be retrograding in Taurus <clears throat> in your eighth house. So this could have you feeling a bit sluggish. This could have you feeling tired. You might feel restless with your partner. Equally, there could be more passion with your partner as well. So just see how you go. This could be a very passionate time. Uh, but equally, you could might be feeling restless. It depends where you are in your relationship. Now, Mars aspect, fourth aspect on Leo in the 11th house is quite interesting. Now, I've been looking at where the sun is transiting and sun is actually transiting houses two and three. So factoring all this in, I'm going to say that socializing could be really nice at this time. You should have some energy for family and friends. So that's a really good thing there. Now Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in your second house, you might get ideas on how to rearrange your finances or how to grow your finances. Um, this is a good ideas time. It's a good strategy, strategic sort of a time. You may not have the energy to act on these things, but you'll have the ideas. Okay. Uh, now Mars eighth aspect on Sagittarius in your third house. Again, this is more ideas that you could gain or insights to generate income or wealth, perhaps from your hobby or your passion, what it is that you love to do. If there's a side business that you're wanting to turn into your full-time profession, you're going to get a lot of ideas on how to do that. So definitely keep a journal and write some of these ideas down. Now Libra, another thing I've been telling everyone is that Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. So if you find in your chart that your natal Mars is in Taurus, then this impacts you and you can definitely watch the Taurus mini segment if you would like to. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in Libra. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now for you, Scorpio, Mars is neutral. But before I begin that, this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon, or Scorpio Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. As I said, Mars is neutral for you. So let's see what you've got going on. Mars will retrograde in Taurus in the seventh house. So take care in your relationships with your partners or your business partner. This could be a time where things are challenging. There could be heated words. There could be arguments, that kind of thing. Now it's Mars fourth aspect on Leo in the 10th house. This could have the effect of energizing the sun. The sun is not actually at home. The sun will be transiting houses two and one. So factoring all this in, I'm going to say that this is a good time to be bold at work. It's a good time to present your ideas. You could really succeed. You could present some ideas that take off. You could do something that's going to bring a lot more money in either for your company or for yourself. So yeah, definitely be bold at work. Present, present your stuff. Showcase what you have. Go for it. Now Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in your first house. This could have a couple of impacts on health. Um, this could tire you out, but equally it might help you figure out what's the best exercise for you. Uh, and it could help you figure out ways to improve your diet actually, because we do have, you know, um, Taurus here. So yeah, this could be to do with diet, physical body. You can use this Mars energy to remember it's retrograding, it's going back. So it's covering some old ground. You might get some aha moments that could really shape your exercise routine and or diet going forward. Okay. I'll give you an example, a quick example of that. I, I was watching Dr. Berg and he mentioned um, that people shouldn't drink too much water. And I'm very high vata, so I watch this with fascination because I've always been trying to figure out the whole water thing. And yeah, he, his video really helped me make a change that I, I've stuck to for many months and it's been really good for me. So, you know, watch some Dr. Berg, I suppose I could say. Um, Mars 
So yeah, Mars eighth aspect on second house, Sagittarius and second house. Great time for you to review your diet in connection with health. Observe closely, see what works for you. So it is things like water, you know, are you drinking the right water? I was drinking too much, actually. Isn't that interesting? Um, you might also, and definitely watch Dr. Berg. There are other, there are, there's always these, you know, fad diets and things and I don't know. But see, this retrograde period might really help you restructure or change something in a way that's really positive that sticks for many months or years afterwards. So see, see what you come up with. Now the other thing, Scorpio, I just want to mention briefly is that Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. Now, if you look up where your Mars placement is, if it's in Taurus, you can watch the Taurus um, episode this time and see what area of your life, you know, you, you have to fight for something or fight for your beliefs, stand up for yourself in some way. All right, well, thank you so much for joining Scorpio and we are now gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now for you, Mars is a benefic. So we do have some good energy here. Mars is Taurus. Oh, this is beautiful. In your sixth house. This is so good. So you're going to have an excellent energy for work, for your service to the world, for getting things done, for beating the competition, for winning legal cases even you know this is this is, this is all kinds of things you're, you're you've got winning energy here is what i really want to say now mars fourth aspect on leo in the ninth house now where is the sun the lord of leo sun is going to be transiting houses one and twelve so factoring all of this in i'm seeing that there could be some clashes with authority So I am seeing to speak up, but be conservative and be careful. There's something about be conservative or go slow, but, and something about there being clashes with authority. Okay, take care if, if that's you. Now Mars, seventh aspect on Scorpio in your 12th house. This may make you restless, okay, at this time. It's a really good time to work on your physical body to look at exercise, yoga. If you're in a relationship, this could be quite a passionate time, okay? So if you're in a good phase in your relationship, you can, you can really enjoy being with your partner. Equally, if you're arguing, then be careful because there could be more arguments. Uh, now, the other thing I have here is Mars' eighth aspect on Sagittarius in your first, first house. This could be a time of weight gain, all right? So if you are prone to putting on a weight, you will want to be careful at this time extra careful with your diet okay and I've got the note here you will want to look after the body the physical body at this time so if you are prone to weight gain be careful across this period because um, you know yeah that that's a possibility because this is Mars at eighth aspect on Sagittarius in the first house Mars energizing Jupiter I see this very often that that can really uh, increase yes weight weight gain is quite possible here but the other thing, all, overall Sagittarius, it's looking really good for you. Okay, so this, this is not bad energy here at all. Uh, in fact, it's very good. Your Mars in Taurus in the sixth house is stunning. Okay, you're one of the lucky three that's having very good energy in that regard. But there's one thing I want to say before I go, and that is Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. So if your natal Mars is in Taurus, then you can watch the Taurus mini report this time and see in what, you know, in, in the areas I mentioned there, that's where you'll be standing up for yourself, fighting for, for your beliefs possibly. All right, well, thank you so much for joining Sagittarius. We are now gonna welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome, I'm just checking the time, we're all good. All right, Capricorn, now this is for Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon, or Capricorn Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now for you, Mars is a malefic, okay? So let's take a look and see what energy we're gonna have here. Because some of it might be good. It could be a bit of a mixed bag. Let's take a look. So Mars is gonna be in Taurus in your fifth house. So your expenses might go up at this time. 
Also, if you have children or you have employees, you manage a team, uh, go easy on your, you know, the people around you at this time. Now Mars fourth aspect on Leo in the eighth house. Now when we're looking at Leo, I want to know where is the sun? The sun will be transiting houses 12 and 11. So factoring all this in, I'm seeing that you've got the potential to stimulate and grow hidden wealth. Uh, or you could even reveal something that's hidden at this time or something might come to light. Some kind of understanding might, might occur. Could be something deep and buried, right? Now Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in your 11th house. This could be to do with investments. You might be reviewing your financial investments at this time, re-strategizing, restructuring. Mars eighth aspect on Sagittarius in your 12th house. You might feel rest restless at this time. Uh, you might even want to take a short little trip to escape it all. All right, and if you do decide to do that, Please do so safely, take care, get insurance, build in buffer time, all that good stuff. So it's not bad, even though Mars is a malefic for you, you do have some nice energies in here, Capricorn. It's not too bad at all. Now, Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. And if you discover that your natal Mars is in Taurus, then you might like to watch the Taurus uh, mini report in this video. So I want to thank you so much for joining Capricorn and we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, let's take a look. Now it's an interesting one because B.V. Raman states that your Mars is a benefic but my software is saying malefic. So there is a little bit of uh, contention here, a bit of difference here. Well, I'm kind of having a quick look at this and it looks like a mixed bag anyway, so I think it's, it's quite all right. Now let's take a look. I would vote for Benefic though if I had to, um, because I do know uh, this Aquarius sign pretty well and I know that, that Mars can, it can work very effectively with Saturn, okay? It really can. Don't believe the people who tell you it can't. Now, Mars in Taurus. I was going to retrograde in Taurus in your fourth house. So you might be feeling restless at home. I also have a note here, watch how you speak with family members, especially your mother at this time. It could be some heated words that get exchanged. If there's difficulty in your relationship with your mother, that could be more prominent at this time. Now there's Mars fourth aspect on Leo in your seventh house. So when we're looking at Leo, I'm looking at the sun and I'm seeing the sun is going to be transiting your 10th and 11th houses. Factoring all this in, I would say that this energy could be stimulating career, could be stimulating social media profile. Um, you might even reignite an old career dream. Isn't that interesting? So there might be some old ambition that you had in the past and that comes to surface or they, they approach you and they say, hey, do you want to take this job or something like that? And you're like, wow, I used to want that years ago. And they're approaching me now. You know, that kind of thing could happen. Now there's Mars seventh aspect on Scorpio in your 10th house. Let's have a look at this. So this could be energizing your career. Again, we've got this old project. You could complete an old project or an old dream resurfaces. Yeah, this is so interesting, Aquarius. Because of this Mars retrograde in quite the um, career area. Let me take a look here. Oh, look, absolutely. Yeah. This is very interesting. You could, it's some old project you might complete or get to do, or an old dream or old opportunity or something to do with career, but that was all that comes back and you get your chance at it now. Now Mars 8th aspect on Sagittarius in your 11th house. This could bring in new opportunities. This could bring new wealth from work that you started a long time ago. Okay, So this could be a project that you started actually ages ago, but it's bringing in the money now. So that's really good as well. So for you Aquarius, there's something that's a bit of time time travel involved in your setup here which is really amazing now uh, for every sign i'm saying 
to look out for the fact that Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. Okay, so if you know where your natal Mars is now, if your natal Mars is in Taurus, uh, you might want to look that one up and you will you'll, you'll get some more insights there. Okay, so that's going to be important. All right, well, thank you so much for joining Aquarius, and we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon, Pisces Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, for you, Pisces, Mars is a benefic. Let's take a look. Oh, this is great. You've got good energy here. I'm just having a look at your thing now. Mars is in Taurus in your third house beautiful this is great energy to grow to expand your social media to make money to bring in new things new opportunities are going to happen this is great perhaps even an old opportunity comes back if there's something you wanted to do but you couldn't but yeah, maybe that's coming back in now mars fourth aspect is on leo in your sixth house and as i'm looking at leo i want to see where is the sun the sun is going to be transiting houses nine and ten so factoring all this in I'm going to say that your focus will be on career okay you are growing your inner authority in your field of expertise right and that's good this is good this is a good complement to what's happening there in your third house now mars seventh aspect on scorpio in your ninth house this is a really great time to review your skills if there's anything you want to learn for that next step up in life <clears throat> now is a really good time for you to invest in your learning, education, perhaps working with a mentor. Who knows, maybe you're becoming the mentor. Maybe you're teaching something that's important to you. <clears throat> and then we've got Mars 8th aspect on Sagittarius in your 10th house. So this is a great time to present ideas, to get up on stage, you know, show your ideas to the world. Give what you've got. This is that time, Pisces. This is really that time. Reach within and give what you've got. And the giving of that, you're giving your inner riches. You know, abundance has to flow back in, doesn't it? So Pisces, I'm loving all of this for you. Now, the other thing I wanted to say is that Mars retrograde happens on natal Mars approximately every 15 years. So when you look up your natal Mars, um, this is really going to impact people this time whose natal Mars is in Taurus. So if that's you, you might want to watch the Taurus mini episode. But other than that, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching my lovely Pisceans and anyone else who has stayed with me until the end. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. The other thing, I should have mentioned this at the start of the video, you can watch this so you can, yes, you can watch this now, but you can watch this in October, you know, when we're getting closer to it. You can also watch this um, at the end of the period just to match up and see, all right, how, how did this work for me? You know, you can, you can take a look and you can see if, if this did work out for you. But I want to thank you so much for joining and let me know how you get on the comments and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.